Hi everyone, I'm Donovan, Head Director of Training and Breeding at Canine Control. Just go get the dog. Uh, just, uh... <laughs> Is it okay to feed my dog raw meat? A. As his main diet. B. As an occasional treat. C. Including bones and organs. Or D. Not at all. How's Duchess doing? Crazy as ever? We're shooting our, we're shooting our new show, our TV show. lifetime family friend. I've known him since he was in the first grade and he's the proud owner of one of my Donovan Pinches. Don't be talking about my children. Y'all be talking about my child. Hi everybody, I'm Donovan from Canine Control and uh, I'm here with my friends Nicole and Nick and their dog Trip, who is a Italian Mastiff, Connie Corso. You know, and we got some good no news, uh, Nick and Nicole are expecting a baby and uh, <laughs> so that's probably a, a relief that you guys have done some training with your dog before yeah. and not after. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Talk a little bit, tell us about some of those issues that you were having with uh, Trip when um, we first started. He was jumping at the fence, being all, you know, wild and crazy, jumping on people when they came in. You know, he's not small, so nobody really appreciates the drool or the jumping. So, Ed called and, you know, he's a sh we show him, and I had him at a show one day, and he lunged at another dog, so that's why, you know, the breeder had told me to contact Donovan and see what we could do, you know, to go from there, so that we can get back into the show training. Yeah, I know. I. I know the breeder of the dog pretty well, and actually I've, I've done a few of her dogs. She's a well-known uh, breeder of Connie Corsos in the tri-state area. Uh, I was surprised when they told me it was right in my own neighborhood, and when I got here, you know, uh, we're actually very familiar with each other's neighborhood, and it's really close by, so it was very convenient as well. And uh, when I, I, remember, I remember when I first came here, and Trip was jumping so high, he was practically going <laughs> over my head, and he was knocking me into the door and into the sink, and I was like, oh, I see. I, I see that, what kind of issues you're having. But uh, let's go on and we'll, we'll go check out. I want to show some things in the back. I want to show how we, uh, how we rigged up the fence and what we did with that. And we'll show a little bit of Tripp's training. Come on, Tripp. Good boy. He is drooling. Okay, look at this. It's like summer in New York. You guys got to open the pool again. You closed your pool too early. But this is a fantastic spot. They got everything you can imagine hooked up for these dogs. You should see these dogs. As a matter of fact, I'm going to show. Can we show the room downstairs? You have to see this. This is really incredible. They have uh, an entirely tiled room with like uh, iron iron gate door on the door. It's it's incredible what these the lengths these people have gone to to take care of their dogs. Top notch, top notch. So this is the uh, dog room, and I just thought well, this was really spectacular that they had went this far. This is downstairs in their basement, which is uh, you know a finished basement, obviously. But come on, in, come on in and take a look. You know um, they did a lot of uh, very intelligent things. They have tile here, waist high on the wall, so the thing can be completely disinfectant. It has a dog bed. It has an elevated, uh, uh, elevated platform for the dog bowls and crate and a, and a pad that fits this head right here fits inside the crate to make the dogs more comfortable. So they have a very secure spot if they need to put the dogs um, away, if they're entertaining or whatever, and which is mostly what they previously did prior to having the dog trained. This was the best solution they had was to maintain the dogs. And I have to say, it is very impressive. One major problem that Trip had, he used to hit this fence so hard. See, around the yard, this fence is six feet high. And he would leap at that fence as well. He used to jump at the fence here at the neighbors, and that was less of an issue. But when he would jump here at this low fence, a couple of times he was completely almost two-thirds of the way over the fence. And I saw him when people were walking by outside, lunging at them. So we came up collectively, and i got to give Nicole a lot of credit for this because she researched the company that made these, uh, 
these fence bikes that were actually designed for uh, birds, to keep birds off the fence, because we had the idea how to do it, and this is made by a company called Thorny Devil, and uh, we came up with this idea of this was the area where the dog would hit, and the spikes are non-penetrating, they're actually uncomfortable, but they can't hurt the dog, and uh, within a few hard crashes into the fence, he really doesn't hit on the fence anymore, right guys? Not at all. So it really worked perfectly, and the great thing about this is you didn't have to yell at the dog about it, you didn't have to undermine your relationship with the dog, you didn't have to ride on the dog's back and holler at him and end up with the dog being afraid of you. The dog kind of learned as a matter of consequence, very similarly to he would learn in nature. I once had an old Texas dog trainer friend of mine tell me he's never had a call about the dog chewing up the cactus. And this is exactly why, because cactus is prickly and doesn't feel good. So the animal learns on his own, by his own actions, not to do this. And the dog abandons the behavior and doesn't smash the fence and doesn't intimidate the neighbors anymore. So that's one, one problem solved. Down. This command is useful for many purposes, but generally speaking, it's it's kind of a, a formal go lay down. It tells the dog, place, place. If you're having guests over, or if a serviceman comes to your door, you're able to tell the dog to go lay down to a spe specified area. In this case, we conditioned him to go lay down at this uh, dog bed here in the living room, and he can be sent from any room in the house. Um, that's that, ultimately the idea is to be able to have it on, on a single auditory signal so that if you're doing dishes in the kitchen and someone brings the front bell, you can say trip place and he'll run to his spot and he'll stay there and you can rely on that while you answer the door, say hello. But at the same time, you still have the security of knowing that should somebody try to assail you or um, they have bad intentions, that the dog is still available to you. So instead of dragging the dog away and locking the dog up, which a lot would which is what a lot of people have to do prior to getting the dog trained because the dog might be barking at the door and someone at the door might indicate to them that they're a serviceman or UPS or something like that and a lot of times people have to say oh let me put my dog away and if in the event of uh, an assault on you the dog is then completely useless um, to defend you in any way so it's much better that the dog be trained and under your control so that um, he may prevent any uh, any attempted assault on you. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay, okay. Good boy, Trip. Again, like I said, I'm getting covered in slobber. That's my buddy. That's my buddy. Yeah. They have another county course, so, uh, an older female rider, right? And uh, rider, unfortunately, has some health issues, um, which held her back a little bit from being able to uh, perform some of the functions and things that we're investing in with uh, Trip, but she's nonetheless a really cool dog and a great pet and her and her and Trip are uh, buddies and you're gonna you're gonna see Ryder now. Good crap. Oh. This is the episode where the cameraman gets attacked. <laughs> where the cameraman gets mauled. Okay, some dogs don't like their picture getting taken. Okay? He's heard about. He thinks he's gonna sell it to the tabloids. So we got two style bowls. One, this one with a hole in the top helps it from helps the dog from not gulping the food. And this is just a regular dog bowl. So they eat raw. The trip eats raw and riser gets a little bit of another kind of raw. So we start off with vegetables. They're freeze dried. These get a little bit. Add some water. And then let that sit for a few minutes. You'll see afterwards it all rehydrates. Then, if we 
take a few minutes and it'll rehydrate again. This process is good because um, it helps with their coat and their digestive system. It stays really good. So what I feed them is raw and there's now bone inside the raw meat and it's ground up that I get from a special dog butcher that's prepared with organs, bone, and you can get beef, lamb, chicken, turkey necks, and he gets beef because he seems to be allergic to everything else. So, and then the other dog gets kibble, which is regular dry food. She gets a scoop of this in there. And he'll get a little bit too, just because I, I feel like he's a little bit underweight. So he'll give him a little few more calories. And then as you can see, the vegetables start to turn wet and moist. And we get the, the food out of the fridge, the raw food. It comes frozen and then you defrost what you need. And it comes in tubes like this. There's some blood left over because it drained. It's a little disgusting, but... it all up together. She gets a little bit too because she gets jealous that the other one's eating such a better diet. But she doesn't need it. He ended up on the raw basically because any kibble that he had he was having a very bad reaction to. And so we did this. So we mix this all up. Give him some food. And then this one gets a little bit of water added to it because the, the water helps expand the food inside the belly, which stops bloat, bloat from getting bloat. So that is their dinner. And they'll eat. All right, come on, dinner time. The answer is C, including bones and organs. But remember, pay close attention and make sure that all the bones and anything hard in the meat is ground up. Hi everybody, and thanks for watching Canine Control TV. I'd also like to say a word here about animal rescue. I'd like to thank the countless animal shelters, humane societies, and private citizens who have fostered and helped to adopt out the millions of animals that remain in our shelters today that have no permanent homes. And I'd like to take this moment also to encourage you to please consider adoption as an option for your new pet. And don't forget to subscribe to our show at youtube.com slash canine control TV show. Also, you can check us out at our website, caninecontroltv.com or look us up on Facebook, Canine Control TV. Thanks a lot again for watching, and don't forget to adopt. Not Macho! Productions.